One of the fundamental principles for the evidence of common ancestry is homology. There are two different types of homology, morphological and molecular. When two or more species share morphological features that are governed by common underlying principles, they are considered homologous. Contrary to what some might think, two anatomical structures can look so different to each other and still be considered homologous. For example, the forelimbs between frogs and lizards look obviously different to each other. Yet, they are considered homologous because they are governed under the same common principles, the humerus, the radius, and the ulna. The inference of homology suggests evidence that the species share a common ancestor. In the evolutionary framework, homology is to be expected among closely related species, where each homology, if common ancestry was true, should be present to its corresponding phylogeny as opposed to others. So a falsification for common ancestry would be if homologous features were to be present across distant different evolutionary branches because that would defy otherwise the unique patterns of similarity. By contrast, morphological analogy is when two or more species share similar characteristics. For example, the flight mechanism between bats is analogous to the one as observing birds. Analogy is simply based on different morphology, similar functionality, whereas homology is simply based on the common underlying principles of morphology. Now, molecular uh, homology is when a protein coding gene from two or more species share nucleotide or amino acid sequence similarity. The more the nucleotides or more preferably the amino acids are between the two species, the more likely they share a common ancestor. The strongest similarity is considered to be the closest relative, just like how humans are supposedly closely related to apes that, that both diverge from a common ancestor. By contrast, the less similar the amino acids or nucleotides are between the two, the less likely they are closely related and the more likely they came from their own different ancestry. Another method used in the constru construction of molecular trees is phylogenomics, which is a method in which the majority of genes from a large portion of the genome, if not all, are compared. Although phylogenomics is one way to infer evolutionary relationships, it will be left out for the discussion and will be used in one of my upcoming videos. So one of the questions that we should ask ourselves is, does similarity or homology actually indicate common ancestry? Well, welcome to the world where convergent evolution contradicts common descent. In the article, Convergent Evolution of Hawaiian and Pacific Honey Eaters, Taxonomists and evolutionary biologists have concluded that the recently 5XC nectar feeding songbirds called Hawaiian honey eaters were more closely related to the Pacific honey eaters as Milifigidae, as well as sharing a common ancestor due to their common morphological, ecological, and behavioral principles they both share together. In the study, however, researchers analyzed the mitochondrial DNA obtained from old museum specimens, and to their surprise, they concluded that they were not actually Milifigidae nor even closely related to them. Rather, after the mitochondrial DNA analysis, they grouped the Hawaiian honey eaters with their new closest relatives and presumably common ancestor that look absolutely nothing like the Melifigidae, despite the fact that they share common morphological principles with them as opposed to their new relatives. Researchers quote unquote, the present one of the most deceptive cases of convergent evolution in birds. Their closest relatives, and presumably their common ancestor, look nothing like Melifigidus. Yet, the two of them have such typical Melifigidus characteristics that they fool generations of taxonomists into placing them in the Melifigidae without equivocation. Although the researchers itself admit a deception in convergent evolution, armchair evolution critics will argue that this doesn't contra contradict the logic of homology nor common ancestry because this similar solution is what should be expected under common selective pressure. Because of the common selective pressure, it is no surprise to see two or more species possessing similar solutions for a similar problem. Ironically, this logic refutes itself since it does not comply with the definition of homology at all. Homology, as I said before, is based on common and unambiguous aspects of morphology. Now, contrary to this nonsensical logic of common selective pressure, similar traits or solution can actually arise from completely different morphological principles. Take, for instance, the flight of the bird. Although they are both capable of flight, their morphology, such as their wing underlying structure, is actually very different and in no way similar, indicating no homology at all. The excuse of common selective pressure is actually nothing more but one of evolutionists get out of jail free card to save the logic of common ancestry. 
Not only does the rescue come in descent, but it also makes homology non-falsifiable, since no morphology that is based on common principles can contradict this, such as this study right here. Another article titled, Convergent Adaptive Radiations in Madagascan and Asian Rennet Frogs. Researchers report both the Madagascan and Asian frogs to share identical ecomorphs, such as remarkable similarity in morphological, physiological, and developmental characteristics through independent parallel adaptive pathways. Despite such rem remarkable similarity, the researchers conducted an analysis of nuclear and mitochondrial DNA showing that the two different species of frogs are actually unrelated to each other, sharing no common ancestry at all. Although the frogs were shown to have echomorphs together, this isn't the case for all rennet or rennet frogs groups, yet another devastating contradiction for homology and common descent. Now, although morphological homology may seem irrelevant to that of molecular, it actually says a lot against the evolutionary reasoning used in the fossil record that lack DNA, showing that just because two or more different fossils appear to be governed under common morphological principles doesn't necessarily mean that it indicates common ancestry, when it could have also happened through independent parallel pathways that have nothing to do with both of them sharing a common ancestry. So the logic of inferring common ancestry based on morphological Homology is really nothing but a question begging, begging issue. Now moving on to molecular homology. It is said that the more similar the amino acids are in a protein from two or more species, the more likely they are closely related and share a common ancestor, and vice versa. Although some critics will argue that a contradiction of molecular homology can only be concluded if it was found that the amino acids were all 100% identical from otherwise unrelated species. This is not the case in the molecular for homology of closely related species. In the protein of human insulin between our closest relatives, the chimpanzee or apes, the amino acids from our insulin protein and the one in the apes is actually 98.18% identical with just two different amino acid changes out of 110 total acids that is found in the human insulin protein. Any protein from two or more different species that is found to have at least most of the amino acids identical can be inferred common ancestry, so it isn't necessary for a protein to be 100% identical in order to say that the two are closely related or share common ancestry. In the article, Parallel Molecular Evolution in an Herbivore Community, researchers report an ATPase protein molecule that makes them insen insensitive or immune to the poisonous cardinolites from milkweed family plants. This protein is recorded by the ATP alpha-1 gene and it contains a series of copy genes caused by gene duplication. These ATP alpha-1 duplicated genes are present only in insect lineages that store cardinolites in their bodies from poisonic milkweed family plants. Out of 26 different insects, only 14 of them such as the leaf beetle and the monarch butterfly are found to exist in poisonous milkweed plant family lineages. The insects that were involved in milkweed uh, family plant lineages, the researchers reported many parallel, in other words, 100% identical amino acid substitutions not just from two, but in the overwhelming majority of unrelated insects that were involved in milkweed family plant lineages. Only a few insect lineages involved in the cardinolites differ slightly in terms of amino acid sequencing, but nevertheless possess the same parallel function as the one, ones from most of the lineages. By contrast, common descent predicts that amino acid similarity should be present in closely related species. Yet, the overwhelming majority of the 14 unrelated insects all have parallel amino acid substitutions, contradicting the argument that amino acid similarity is unequivocal to common ancestry in closely related species. Even Sen, who was involved in the main research himself, said, the findings of parallel evolution in our two but numerous herbivore insects increases the significance of the study because such frequent parallelism is extremely unlikely to have happened simply by chance. Evolution critics argue and moan, just like the one from morphology, that the reason why they possess the same molecular protein mechanism is because they are all undergoing common selective pressure. Because the sequencing of amino acids and their geometric structure of the protein is so critically important to its function, it is no surprise to see similar solutions involve similar amino acids, given that it is the only way it can evolve. However, this is to some extent false. In the peer review article, Structural Analysis of the Nurse Shark Antigen Receptor Molecular Convergence of NAR, the researchers report a protein from nurse shark and mammalian of camels that act like an antigen re receptor. 
This protein is reported to have parallel or similar functionality as both from the nurse shark and the camel. Now, despite the mechanism that exists in the same proteins from these unrelated species, they are actually based. The proteins are actually based on entirely different amino acids that show no evidence that the convergent molecular proteins from the two are actually homologous, suggesting different ancestry rather than the same common one. What this study shows is that parallel, if not similar, protein solutions can also arise from different amino acids and their geometric protein folding shapes rather than having most of them identical. Just like the dissimilarity of the sequencing from the two unrelated lineage antigen protein, they are both capable of doing the same, if not similar, thing. Therefore, if common descent was true to the one from the insects as I have shown before, their amino acids would have been entirely different. The fact that the overwhelming majority of insect lineages all attain parallel amino acid substitutions really states a lot against common descent and the claim that similarity at the molecular level is evidence for common ancestry. Another interesting study that involves convergent evolution contradicting common descent is the famous nylon eating bacteria. The genes that are known to play a role in nylon me metabolism are nylon A, nylon B, nylon B G duplication, and even nylon C. Both of these genes encode for enzymes of E1, E2, and E3, and they are found to exist in nylon eating bacteria like flavobacteria and pseudonomus, or pseudonomus, however you pronounce it. In the study, high homology between 6 ACD of flavobacterium and pseudomonas strains, the researchers report the same E1 enzyme encoded by the same nylon gene that is present in both flavobacteria and pseudomonas. A more molecular analysis shows that the E1 enzyme has a polypeptide, polypeptide of 493 amino acids long. Interestingly, both the flavobacteria and pseudonomus E1 enzyme was extremely highly homologous, with about 99% of the amino acids being identical. In other words, two different completely unrelated microorganisms develop the same E1 enzyme with 99% of the amino acids being identical to each other, or 98%. This again speaks against common descent since it shows that genetic me mechanisms, just like the one observed in the cardinal like insects, can too create homologous molecular pro proteins as if they were inherited from a common ancestor when in reality they were actually done independently. Not to mention too that this enzyme is more strictly conserved than the so-called closely related human chimp insulin protein that is about 110 amino acids with only two amino acid changes. Critics of evolution will argue that this convergent case of bacteria doesn't contradict common descent because it is quite possible that both microorganisms exchange the same gene through horizontal gene transfer. To address this claim, I cited another st study titled Emergence of Nylon Oligomer De Degradation Enzymes in Pseudomonas Through Experimental Evolution. In this study, the researchers isolated the Pseudomonas all the way to New Zealand away from the nylon Japanese factory where flavobacteria was present. They experimented with a strain of pseudomonas that could not metabolize the nylon waste and culture with the nylon waste as its only source of carbon and nitrogen. Within some time of the experiment, the researchers to their surprise found a strain that appeared in the culture having the same nylon A and nylon B genes encoding the E1 and E1 enzymes as exactly it was observed in the nylon A and nylon B gene from flavobacteria, giving them the ability to metabolize the ACD and permit the bacteria to live off those molecules. In this study, the pseudonomus obtained the same genetic mechanism as the one from its unrelated flavobacteria. So to say that they obtain those genes through the process of horizontal gene transfer is actually extremely unlikely since those pseudomonas bacteria were clinically isolated in New Zealand that was about probably 11,000 miles away from the Japanese nylon factory. It is clear that from the study that the bacteria acquired those genes through once again independent parallel pathways as opposed to common ancestry and horizontal gene transfer. The fact there are studies that show genetic mechanisms independently creating homologous proteins that give the appearance as if they were inherited by a common ancestor pretty much says a lot against the common descent idea that similarity in genetics is unequivocal proof of common descent. Well, that's the end of my presentation, so thanks for watching.